Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to use a wonderful little tool called TDAR, T-D-A-R-R. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry. But this wonderful tool we're going to use, I'm going to teach you how to download, install, set up, uh, and get it working for your needs. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and open up Edge here. I'm going to stop this little new tab here. And we're just going to navigate to tdar.io. And then we're going to go ahead and navigate to the Docs section. And we're going to scroll down until we get to this section here. Now, today I'm going to teach you how to do this on Windows 10. Uh, but the idea is going to be you know, similar across everything you're doing except for probably Docker. Docker is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to go ahead and download the TDAR Updater 132x64. And while that's downloading, we'll just tell it to open when done. All right, perfect. Now we can go ahead and close that out. So let's go ahead and unzip this. As you can see, I've already downloaded it once before. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and just run the updater. And I like to right click and run this as administrator. Um, if you already have um, the run as admin options turned off, you won't need to do this, but I haven't turned this off yet. Windows 10 is going to pop up with a security warning. Go ahead, click more info, hit run anyway. Um, it's just because it's a handmade creation and not something that's digitally signed, but that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and let that run. All right, so that has gone ahead and completed its job. So now we're going to go ahead and do, um, there are three things that we need to open, and we actually need to open them um, somewhat in a sequential order. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our folder where we have this downloaded. And we're going to first, we're going to run into this folder here titled TDAR Server. We're going to go ahead and open this up and run that. And this too is going to do the same thing on first boot. It's going to load everything that it needs in order for it to do its job. And while it's here, it's going to pop up. It's going to ask you to allow some of the features through. Um, I generally just select both of these networks and hit allow access. And it may do this a number of times. All right, so now that's ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and let's go back. And now we need to open up a node. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll double click this. Allow access. All right, node is registered. We are ready to go. So the last thing we need to do is we actually need this. We need a place to go to in order to load this up. So we're gonna go ahead and run the web UI. And the same as before, we're going to go ahead, select all networks, hit allow access. All right, now you see here it says TDAR server is alive with this UI. So we're going to go ahead and highlight this. Assuming my fingers will work today. Wow, my fingers really do not work today. Let's try this again. We're going to control C that. And let's go ahead, we're going to minimize these windows. Let's go back into our edge here and paste that into here. And now we are into the main graphical user interface for TDAR. Uh, you can go ahead and scroll down a little bit and read some of its information. There's quite a bit here, uh, but let me go ahead and let's just get right into the meat and potatoes of this. All right, so now that we've got this set up and running, uh, we need to point this to our library, right? So of course we want to have this um, convert, you know, whatever it is you, you have, you know, movies, movies, TV shows, whatever it is, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and click on the libraries folder. And we're going to click, we're going to add a new library. And let's go ahead and name this library. I'm just going to type this title, title this test. And now the very first thing we need to do is uh, we want this to um, you know, if you want this to to continue to scan your folders as you're importing new movies into this, 
Um, you're going to want to go ahead and turn on folder watch and that will scan new folders um, once you've converted everything in that folder. And that will scan it for new media, see if it meets, meets the criteria that we want to convert for, and then it will do the conversion automatically for us. So we're, we're going to go ahead and turn on folder watch. Um, we also want this to scan on start. So whenever every, whenever TDR boots up, it's going to start scanning the folders. And now it needs to know the source path. In this case here, I, I have this in my E drive under a test folder. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to go to E, test. Boom. That simple. So now we can go ahead and leave the rest of these defaulted. Now it needs a place where our transcoder cache is going to be. Um, I have two recommendations here. Uh, the first recommendation is that we do this on a drive that's not the same drive that we are scanning from. Um, the second one is I would definitely recommend this on an SSD. It's just going to be that much less faster. Um, I happen to have my main boot drive as an SSD, so we're going to go ahead and point it to that boot drive to a transcoder folder I already have set up for it. All right. So the next thing is we have this option here for an output folder. Now, by default, TDR will take any file you have in it, and after it's converted to the way you want it to convert, it will replace the original file. Now, if you don't want it to do that, in this section here, you're going to tell it to go to a different folder instead of replacing that file. Now, um, you, you may want to do this for testing purposes in case you have um, a bunch of movies that you're trying to convert and you just want to make sure that they're going to be up to snuff with what you want, um, then I would definitely set an output folder here that's different different than the original folder, um, and definitely don't tell it to delete your source file. Uh, but since we're going to go ahead and just do this for testing purposes, we're going to leave this setup with the original stock configurations, where it's going to go ahead and replace the folder, replace the file, pardon me, and go from there. Um, next is our containers. This is just saying, what type of containers are we scanning for? Um, you know, is it going to scan for anything and everything? Maybe you don't want it uh, to, to be converting your AVI files. Maybe you just want it converting your MKVs into another type of container, right? Um, this is where you're going to do that. So now we're getting into the meat and potatoes. This is where, um, this is where the whole reason why you're downloading TDAR and running it, because you have files that are in a certain format and you don't want them in that format anymore. Like for me, it's, for instance, um, I have a lot of my files in H.264 and a lot of them are running AAC audio. The problem is not all of my gear in my house supports H.264 and AAC. Um, they all do support H.265 and AC3 though. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to tell it to do exactly that. Um, if you scroll down here under this transcode options, you're going to see that there's a couple of options already, already defaulted. The very first one you need to leave here. Do not touch this one. Um, there's a reason why this one, as it says, the plugin will move the video stream to the front so TDR will recognize the codec correctly. Without this, this will not work, so you need to have this enabled. This one, however, you do not need. You do not need these. Um, you only need these if they pertain to you. So if you want this, um, and you, you, on each of these, you can click on there's a little I that tells you what they do. So if you click on the little I, this will tell you that files not in H.265 will be converted to H.265 using an NVIDIA GPU with FFmpeg. I'm not using an, an NVIDIA uh, GPU on this computer. I'm, I'm using QuickSync through an Intel processor, so I'm going to leave that alone. But if you do have an NVIDIA video card that will work for you for, for NVEC, perfect. Use this one and move forward. But what I'm going to do is there's a few options that I want that are not already here, but they are under the community tab and I'll show you how to get to there. So if you scroll up to the top, we'll go ahead and click on plugins. And now here it defaults to the community tab. Here there is a large community of people that have created quite a list of all types of presets that you can add into this. Um, the one preset that I want is I want everything to be in AC3. So I'm just going to type in AC3 and I'm going to hit enter. And here's all the presets that are built in that are already copied, that are already built surrounding AC3. 
this particular one right here is the one that I'm going to be using. This will do for any file that is not in AC3 using a surround track, it will convert to AC3. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy ID and then copy to local. From there, let's go back up to our libraries. We're going to go back to our transcode options. And we're just going to paste in that ID and hit enter. And now at the bottom, this is that little plugin that we just added. And I'm going to move this priority up because I want this to, as soon as this happens, I want it to encode the audio first. And then we're going to encode video second. So from there, I'm going to go grab the plugin that I want for my video. So we'll go back here to the plugins, make sure we're on community. And then this time, we're just going to type in H265 and hit enter. And now this shows us every option with H265. Now the one that I'm going to be using is going to be this one right here. Um, this will be doing H265 and audio kept only, which means it's going to be stripping out subtitles. It's going to be stripping out metadata, anything that you don't need. That All it's going to be doing is just making a simple H265 MKV container with audio. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy ID, copy to local, and I'm going to go back to my libraries, and I'm going to scroll back down to transcoder options, paste in that name, and then now you see it's been added to the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and enable this by clicking the red check mark, and I'm going to move this up to priority three. So now you see I have this one here. I have my audio and my video. All right, perfect. So now, as you see, and for whatever reason, there's a bug in this current version. You turn on folder watch and you have to do it again. Um, but now you see we've pointed it to our test folder. We've pointed it to, if I can, you can use my fingers today. We've pointed it to our transcoder temp folder. We've left all these alone. We've told it just to scan for any container that's in there and we've given it our options. Uh, if you want to check, you can, yeah, uh, before it does any kind of transcoding, it does what's called a health check. It makes sure that the file is complete, that there's no missing many missing header information. Um, if you want to have it do it quickly, leave it on the default. If you want to have it go thoroughly, you can switch it here. I find that it works just fine and quick, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Um, if you want to schedule this, at any given time. So say that you only want this um, to be running, you know, midnight to, you know, say five o'clock in the morning, right? Let's go ahead and toggle all, and that will just that will undo all those cycles, and then we'll just say Sunday. So you say so we're going to do this midnight to five o'clock in the morning every day, right? So we're just going to click on here, and this now chooses every day. We're going to do the same thing all the way up to, with my fingers would work all the way up to five o'clock. And now that is scheduled to run its job midnight through five o'clock, Monday through Friday. And it will leave your computer alone the rest of the hours of the day. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave them all toggled. All right. So now here, let's go back to our main page where it says TDAR. And here it's gonna show me the stats of the computer. It shows me the time clock, shows me how much memory is in use, shows me the uh, how, how much process of usage there is on the host computer, and it shows me how much memory is in use right now at this very moment. Um, this is just a low power Plex server that I run this on, but it does its job at night perfectly. I don't have to worry about it. So you'll see here that there is a node running, and you'll notice that right now there's nothing actually happening in it right now. It's just kind of sitting here idle. And that's because we haven't told it to actually do its job yet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our libraries. And under this library here, we're going to click on the options and we're going to click on scan fresh. And now this is going to scan the library that we just imported. And it's going to look for any kind of files. And then it's going to add them to our queue. So... There's a test file. It's a movie titled 13 Hours. It's an H.264 in 1080p, and it's a 10 gigabyte file. But we notice it's just sitting in the queue, and it still hasn't done anything yet. And that's because we haven't told this 
to actually begin. We haven't told us what to do. So here's where things get a little bit interesting. When I first went to use this, I looked at this going, does this mean CPU cores? I didn't understand, but, but I figured it out. What, what I'm looking at here is it's saying that at any given time, I can be doing two CPU transcodes or multiple CPU transcodes just by clicking this option here and changing it to any number. And I can do however many CPU based health checks also based off this number. And then the same thing works for GPU. If I want to do GPU only transcoding, I can do it here. If I want to be doing GPU only health checking, I can do it here. So, and then what's even fun, we have more fun is in the options here, you can you can select whatever options you want to. So and you can get really granular with this. If you want this um, to only use uh, only use the the NVEC, NVEC encoder. So like say you're running you know, an Intel system with a, a NVIDIA card and you don't want it stressing the quick sync, you want it to just be running balls to the wall with your video card. You can, you can tell it to only be using the NVEC encoder or you can tell it to be using QSV for your quick sync or you can use FAPI. Either way, you can really, really get granular on this. Um, we're going to go ahead and tell this to allow GPU workers to do CPU tasks. Not that it really matters on this case, but it helps. Um, I, I like to leave this on. And so here's even more fun. With the node, you can also draw down when the node does its job. So again, if you want this to only run Monday through Friday, you know, midnight to five, you can do the same thing. And you can tell it that from you know, midnight to one o'clock in the morning, if you hit the plus here, this will, across this entire board here, this will allow CPU and GPU to transcode and health check all files within your system. And it'll do, it'll allow for, so if you hit one, it'll do one CPU health check at a time, one GPU health check at a time, uh, pardon me, one CPU transcode at a time, one GPU transcode at a time, one CPU health, health check, and one GPU health check. Does that make sense? Perfect. So let's go ahead and let's tell this to go ahead and run one CPU based health check and one CPU transcode. If I could click wonderfully, that would be fantastic. So now that I've clicked the one, you see it just popped up here showing that I was running through a health check. And now it's going through my plugins and it's checked to see, and you'll, you'll see here that it's showing plugin three of three. So what that means is the very first plugin it already did where it reordered as it did. Um, the second plugin was my AC3 um, saying that if anything is not an AC3 first run sound, it already, already converts to. In this case, in this particular file, the file was already in AC, AC3 surround sound. So it skipped that plugin. And now it's on the third one, which means that it's not an H.265, it's an H.264. So now it's gonna begin converting my H.264. Um, I'm running a little bit of an older processor. It's a four, it's a four series um, Intel i5 so it's going to be running a little bit slower for those of you with the faster processors this is going to be running much much faster um you know uh, eighth gen intels and up are going to be running much much faster but that's kind of the gist of it if you guys have any other questions feel free to reach out to me um and i will see, see what i can do to help you but you guys have should now have a good basic understanding of how to run tdar how to get it all set up um, and how to go from there have a great day